Can you say your name and the branch of service? Kent, England, U.S. Navy. What was your rank? I was a E5, BT2, second class boiler technician. And where did you serve? I, I served on a ship that spent 90% of its time in Vietnam. Okay. Where was the other 10%? Well, we'd go on R&R &R like Hawaii, or down to Australia, New Zealand. So, um, Why did you decide to join the military? I come from a very small town. Everybody I knew had served in World War II. I had an uncle and a cousin that both were in the Navy. And I always thought they told me about what they did and how much they traveled. And I thought, if I join the military, I want to travel and see part of the world. And that's what I got to do. So that's why you decided to join the Navy? Yeah. That's why I joined the Navy. Right. <sighs> um, do you recall what your first days in service felt like? Got off the bus out of Milwaukee into Great Lakes, Illinois, and his drill instructor came up and he started hollering at us, smoke and lamp is out. Okay, pull in. And, and I had a war, I'm like, Red, what did I get into? <laughs> um, what is one thing from boot camp that you will never forget? Getting up in the middle of the night and scrubbing little squares on the floor so it would look nice for inspection the next morning. We took a toothpaste or toothbrush. Each party had a square and you scrubbed it nice and shiny. Hmm. Um, what is a story, besides that one, what is a story from boot camp that you seem to tell people over and over? I really don't have any stories. Did I tell from boot camp? How long were you um, in boot camp for? Is it like usually six weeks? Or does it vary? It varies. It varies. Okay. I think I was in eight weeks. Eight weeks, okay. Yeah. What was your favorite food from the mess hall? I liked the pancakes they had. Yeah, they tasted like <laughs> rubber. It's better than dried scram scrambled eggs and everything else. Because that was all. All their eggs and that was powdered eggs. So at least with the pancakes, you could they were, were taste like rubber, but they were better than the eggs. Yeah, we learned about powdered. Didn't yeah. we talk about that the other day? The powdered egg. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan and Adam were talking about powdered eggs. Yep. About powdered eggs. Oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> Didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, these guys got them back in mom. Like, yep. I heard of powdered milk before. Don't think we I've had that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, do you remember what it was like arriving in Vietnam? Well, see, I was on a ship. That's completely different than anybody else. You know, we didn't really have any contact with anybody over there, other than. Our own personnel. Okay. Um, so your job was a boiler technician. Yep. Did it say that throughout your, what was your time of service? How long were you in the service? I was in from 66 to 70. Okay. And did you say the boiler technician throughout those times? Yep. Um, can you tell me about a couple of the most memorable experiences that you've had? One of the most memorable is that we were off working on the, shore of Vietnam and we put they call plane guard for the for the uh, battleship uh, New Jersey and just to watch the New Jersey shoot their sixteen inch guns and the ship would just sway when the ship went off. That was really Quite an experience. Another one was when the Pueblo was taken in North Korea. 
North Korea took the, there's a communication sh ship, and he took it back to North Korea. And we went up there trying to get them to come out and take a look at us, because we were loaded for bear. And we wanted to fight, and they wouldn't go out. So we were right outside the harbor in North Korea. I'll never forget, you could see the, the ship, the Pueblo, anchored inside the harbor. Um, when your service ended, what did you do in the days and weeks afterward? I got out. I spent weeks on my honeymoon. I come back to Madison on a Sunday, and I start working on a Wednesday. Three days later. That's quick. Um, was there anything that you're hesitant about coming home? I was glad to get out of California. When we got off the ship and we got back out of the, out of the uh, base in San Diego, we were called baby killers and everything else. And you just didn't even want to look at them. You just wanted to get out and leave. And that's what I wanted to do. Just get away. Because that's the way the people in California treated us. Horrible. Um, coming home, um, was there anything that made your transition easier? I, I don't think I really had a big problem. I got along with... Everybody, when I first got home, they knew I was I served in the military. They were just as nice as could be. So, I, I, you know, I just can't say I have. Mm -hmm. My transition was real easy. Great to hear that. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the general military? It didn't change my thinking about war, but like my dad told me when I was growing up, he says, you want to live in this country? Defend this country. Somebody's got to defend it. Somebody's got to go to war. If it's me, it's me. Um, how did your service and experiences affect your life? I think it really helped me. My wife said it really helped me mature a lot. Because I was growing up, come a small town, and I could drink beer at 18. I was a, ri a real wild guy. And I, when I got in the military, it put the brakes on. I feel like that's a, it seems like what I'm hearing a lot. Was, yeah, it's like a pretty good answer. <laughs> um, what is a Stoughton veteran community like? It's great. I lived in Stoughton for 16 years. And I've been a life member to VFW in Stoughton since 1988. So I, I think the world at this post. I'm also a member of the American Legion. And like I said, nobody does more for the community than the Legion and the VFW. Mm. Is there any questions that you can think of that I haven't asked? Yeah. Is there anything that you want to add that we haven't covered? Not really, but I'd like to see more young men join the military because of what, from what I understand, the, the numbers are going downhill as far as recruitment and everything else. Well, what's going to happen when China and Russia not start outdoing us? we got to start getting back our military to build back better.